Hey everybody, good morning. It's 9.02 and it's time for the devotion, the start of the week. So it's cool. We're going to be in Psalm 42 through 43 today. And so we're going to tackle actually two Psalms. One of them's super short, so it's not going to take long to get through it. But um, anyway, my name is Bo Willette. Thanks for checking out the devotions. You could always check out my archives at my YouTube channel at Bo Willette, and the spelling is right there. So hopefully that helps you. So let's get into Psalms, songs. How, who doesn't like tunes, right? Who doesn't like songs? They're so cool. So um, let's see what the songs of the Bible are here t- this week. So we're going to start book two of the Psalms. We finished book one. They kind of put it into different books, kind of sections. So this is going to be 42 through 72. So hmm, a lot of Psalms. And it says, this is the choir director, a psalm of the descendants of Korah. So we saw a lot of David in the first book of the Psalms. Now we see in this second collection, we see some of the descendants of Korah. You can look up Korah, and we went over some of Korah's descendants in our study of the law. And the people of Israel and all those cool descendants and the Levites and stuff like that. But these people were Levites. They definitely worked the temple area. And they definitely had a part to play in the tunes that were to be sung unto the Lord. So let's see how what their songs were like. So it's kind of interesting, right? We get a kind of another composer, if you will. As the deer longs for the streams of water, so I long for you, O God. Oh, this is a famous one. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. That's maybe what you're used to singing. When I go through the Devo, a lot of times I'll use the New Living Translation. It kind of opens it up a little bit. You know, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. You know, the idea of longing for God. Man, that's something. Do I long for God? Do I have that kind of heart for God where I long for God? I want God. God, I want you. You know, that kind of passionate desire for God. Just as the deer pants for the water, right? Or longs for the streams of water. So my soul really longs for God. Mm. It says, I thirst for God, the living God. Where, when can I go and stand before him? Mm. I thirst for God. I long for God. I want to drink of the streams of the Lord. You know, this kind of idea is just the idea of the betterment of God, the partaking of God. I love it. And it says, when can I go and stand before him? It's a question. Day and night, I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, where is this God of yours? Gosh, what a sad response to the, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You don't really hear this next line too much sung in the congregation of the churches, right? Where it says, day and night, I have only tears for food. That's right. Sometimes we can be super sad. Sometimes we can be really depressed. And our emotions are at an all-time high. But yet we can come to God. You know, we maybe go to people far too much when we really need to just go to the Lord and kind of let God know where we're at. But that's what I love about the Psalms, right? They're going to the Lord. They're singing to the Lord these day and night. I have only tears for food. When can I stand before you, God, uh, while my enemies continually taunt me? They They taunt me all the time. Where is this God of yours? says, my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid a sound of a great celebration. Hmm. Do you ever get caught up in remembering what it used to be like? How things used to be? You know, those great times of worship, those great times of just being in the presence of God. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I put my hope in God. Hmm, Where's my hope this morning? I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. 
Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Hmm. So in our discouragement, do we remember God? Even when we're weeping so much, right? We're, we only have tears for food. That sounds like a lot of tears. But do we remember God in our discouragement? Notice it doesn't say don't be discouraged or don't be sad. But it says, I remember you when I'm these things. And sometimes that's half the battle is just remembering God. Again, remembering God instead of maybe doing other things that maybe remembering other things or having our minds go in other directions. It says, but I will remember you even from distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Mazar. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. You know, the sea is a scary thing. And here it talks about God's and it kind of coming over you where it's like a tumult of a raging sea. Right? Waves surging, crashing on you. Right? But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. Whoa. So just as waves crash, and I tell you what, surfing, I've been caught inside. And when you get caught inside surfing, it means waves are just pounding in front of you and all that whitewash water is just coming at you and crushing you and you're just getting tossed around just getting tossed around you get up here comes another one you get up here comes another one and I love how he says but each day the Lord pours his unfailing love on me hmm yeah that's that's cool it's funny discouragement crying with all these tears yet affirming God's unfailing love, even in discouragement. Always looking to the promises of God, that God's unfailing love will not change in my life. He is my father and he loves me. And that's how I want to go about it when I'm discouraged. If I'm discouraged, am I remembering God? Am I remembering his unfailing love, even in the sad and discouraging times? He says he'll remember his unfailing love, and though each night I sing his song, praying to God who gives me life. Mm, singing a song every night. That sounds pretty cool, too. You know, having a song in your heart to God, you know, singing that song unto the Lord. I kind of love that idea, especially being a musician. There's something about a song that just sticks in your mind, sticks a melody that kind of goes through your mind, your favorite tune. You know, and he says, though, each night I sing a song praying to God who gives me life again, thinking of the goodness of God, that God gives you even life. So in the midst of discouragement, still looking upward, right? And it says, oh, God, my rock, kind of that solid foundation. I cry when, why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Gosh, very honest, right? Not like, hey, I've overcome. I'm the greatest. Man, I'm never discouraged. No crying here. You know, nothing. You don't get that at all from this uh, descendants of Korah psalm, right? God, you're solid. Your unfailing love's awesome. But, um, uh, but I wander around in grief. I'm sorrowful. I cry all the time. I'm discouraged. I wander around in grief. And I'm oppressed by my enemies. Their taunts break my bones. They scoff, where's this God of yours? They're always questioning, always taunting me about my relationship with you. Do people taunt you because of your relationship with God? This is kind of seems like where the Psalm's coming from, huh? Even in the midst of that discouragement, the psalmist is looking up. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior, my God. And I love that. Sometimes questioning yourself, why am I so bummed? If God loves me, why am I so filled with anxiety? Why am I so stressed out? You know, is God not my peace? Is, if I have God, don't I have everything? 
you know, what is going on with me? Those are great questions that the psalmist kind of goes in the direction that the, the sons of Korah are going and the descendants of Korah. And I kind of like that where you can even come to God and say, God, why am I so discouraged? You know, you can ask those questions. Why am I so filled with stress and anxiety? Why not? Why am I so bummed out when I have you on my side? Um, if you are for me, who can be against me? Why am I? Why do I fear humans? Why do I uh, act in fear? Why am I resentful and bitter? Why do I let that person live in my brain like that? You know, I love those questions. Those are great. You know, why am I discouraged? Why do I have greed like I do? Why do I envy and strife and lustful inclinations? Why are those things in me? What is going on within me? Lord, help me to trust in you. Mm, love that psalm. Love that kind of heart, man. That's such a real one. Such a good one, too. Get all that stuff out of you, right? Why am I so discouraged, God? What's going down, right? It's cool. Now, 43 says, Declare me innocent, O God. Defend me against these ungodly people. You know, that's the kind of vindicate me, you know, clear my name, man. All these people are mocking me, making fun of me, you know, but clear my name, right? Defend me. Be my lawyer. It's interesting. The New Testament says Jesus is our lawyer, right? He's our advocate. Well, this is the cry to God, to Yahweh. Yahweh, be our lawyer. New Testament, Jesus is the lawyer. Interesting. There's so many ways that Jesus... His character, uh, the way he is treated, the way uh, he functions is God in human flesh. That's why Jesus, uh, we say Jesus is God in human flesh, is because look at all the attributes that he claims for himself, right? He is the lawyer. He is the intercessor. He is the one who is the savior, right? Even though these talk about God being the savior, God's the savior. Yahweh's the savior. You know, Jesus is the savior. He is the one that we go to. He's the mediator. He's the one who's the lawyer. He's going to defend us. He's going to vindicate us. He's going to declare, declare us not guilty in front of everybody, in front of all of the heavenly host. Whoa, it's crazy, right? Make a public declaration saying you're innocent. You're, you, even though, man, you know you're a sinner, but yet he's going to vindicate you. Wow. For you are God, my only safe haven. Why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? The idea that the psalmist has again is that, man, he feels so tossed to and fro, kind of like we saw in the last psalm of that wave, kind of being tossed all over. Where's God? Why isn't God doing something? You know, a very honest heart before the Lord. And again, questioning, why must I wander in grief? Why are my enemies still trying to come after me, oppress me? You know, you know, gosh, what is the deal? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Mm, light and truth. Those things kind of go hand in hand in the Bible. Light, something that illuminates. Truth, something that illuminates, right? Uh, truth from air, light from darkness. It says for us to walk in the light as he is in the light. Mm, to step out into the light. You know, and the Psalms are definitely that. They're coming into the light, right? You're coming in, you're bringing everything into the light. Lord, look at my mess. Look at this. Look at that. I'm here. I'm crying all the time. I'm discouraged. I'm bummed. I'm so messed up. Like, why? Where are you? Where are you, God? You know what? I don't, I mean, talk about coming into the light. I mean, you are really all over the place with God. You're bringing out everything. Nothing's hidden. Everything is just out. You know, and this is your tune. This is your song that you're playing. Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. Then I will go to the altar of God, to, uh, to God, the source of all my joy. Does God live in a mountain? Is that what it's saying? God lives in a mountain. Chapter 40, 43. On his holy mountain where he lives? Is that what he's saying? God say, hey, wait, let's go to that mountain. Now, in our study of the Bible, just walking through it, our devotions, 
And what holy mountain seems kind of holy? Well, it's probably the place where, you know, Jerusalem's at, the place where the temple is going to be built, the place where they would go and worship God. So maybe that's what it's referring to, right? Not so much where God lives in that little house over there on that mountain, right? There I will go to the altar of God. Okay, so we get the clear understanding. This is this is definitely a place of worship. The source of all my joy, and I will praise you with my harp. I'll praise you with my instruments. I'm going to get out my guitar, get it out of the case, get it warmed up. I'm going to praise you. Where? On that mountain, on that place, that place where the temple is. Uh, and and it's going to be awesome. There at the altar, the place of sacrifice, right? That altar, the altar of incense too, the altar of prayer, you know, bring my prayers to God, right? And my bringing things before the, that altar, that special place of communion with God, you know, that kind of idea. I love that intimacy with God, prayer, word, focused on God, very devoted, you know, in a heart towards God, wanting to draw close, wanting to get near, um, that kind of idea. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior, my God. So it ends very much like Psalm 42. So 42 and 43 are great ones, right? They kind of roll right together. Where are you at? Why am I discouraged? And you are my Savior and my God. And again, we look to that New Testament and we see that Jesus has come to be our Savior. He says, I am the Savior. He is the promised Messiah that we've been waiting for, this son that we've been waiting for from the line of Judah. Uh, we've been seeing that throughout the Bible. And we know there's a promise to David that one from his descendants will always sit on the throne, kind of the ruler, uh, a forever ruler. We've already seen that in our time of devotion. And so Jesus is our ultimate fulfillment. We still get discouraged. We still feel like, where's God? We still see that. But instead of looking into space and going, God, where are you? We can look back in time and history and know for certain that God has revealed himself and his, he has drawn close to us in the person of Jesus Christ. So you don't have to, we know we're not alone. I might feel alone. I might feel discouraged. I might feel fear. But I can look back and go, you know what? God has met me right where I needed to be meet, met. He's come to this world. He's, in a sense, penetrated this world and entered into it and did something for me. One of the things he did for me is make me know that he's real, that there is a God, and that I don't have to doubt that anymore, like I did so much growing up. Oh, I don't believe in God. I look outside. There's no God. This is what Jesus came to do, is reveal the Father, make known the Father, that there is truth, uh, and that we've been a visited planet. And so even though we, grow, we can get discouraged, we can always look back on history and be pretty stoked. So... Very cool psalms. I think they're very real. <clears throat> I really like these uh, Descendants of Korah psalms. Um, I find that great that you speak to your own heart, so to speak. Why am I discouraged? Why am I bummed out? Lord, why? When I have you and you are my hope. You know, you're my strength. You're my rock. You're my solid foundation. Lord, maybe the remedy is to get out the guitar and do a little worship. And just start getting my mind focused back on you. That kind of idea. So very cool. Love that kind of devotion to the Lord. So man, very cool stuff. So Paula, thanks for checking out the Devo. Casey, thanks for checking out the devotion as well. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you guys Tuesday. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I was on time today. I got up early, went to Mount Lemon and uh, with a buddy and had a great time up there. Did some prayer thought of the Lord. Man, that was special. And um, yeah, so beautiful mornings. Enjoy them. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.